In the early 19th century, scientists didn't think in terms of energy. They thought in terms of individual powers or forces. These were all disconnected, unrelated things. The power of the wind, the force of a door closing, the crack of lightning. The idea that there might be some sort of overarching unifying energy which lay behind all these forces had yet to be revealed. One poor hungry man's drive to understand the hidden mysteries of nature would begin to change all that. Young Michael Faraday hated his job. He was uneducated, the son of a blacksmith. He'd been lucky to become a bookbinder's apprentice. But Faraday craved one thing. He craved knowledge. He read every book that passed through his hands. He developed a passion for science. All of his free time and his meager wages were poured into his self-education. He was on the threshold of an incredible journey into the invisible world of energy. Faraday had impressed one of his master's customers and was rewarded with a ticket that would change his life. Please. Can I pass, please? Can I pass? Some of us are trying to improve ourselves. If people will let us. Of course, of course. Pass, pass. This way to a better life. <laughs> In the early 1800s, science was a pursuit of gentlemen, something Faraday was clearly not. He had a rudimentary education, he'd read widely, he'd gone to public lectures. But in 1812, he was given tickets to hear Sir Humphrey Davy, the most prominent chemist of the age. <laughs> 19th century scientists were the pop stars of their day. Their lectures were hugely popular. Tickets were hard to come by and Davy reveled in his status. They're waiting. I know. He was also a keen follower of the latest fashion, nitrous oxide, or laughing gas. He said it had all the benefits of alcohol without the hangover. Electricity, ladies and gentlemen. A mysterious force that can unravel the confusing mixture of intermingled substances that surround us and produce pure, pure elements. Davy was an absolutely first-rate scientist. However, many will come to say that his greatest discovery is Michael Faraday. Metals unknown, that is, until I isolated potassium from molten potash and sodium, as I showed you last time, from common salt. That same magical... Faraday may not have been born a gentleman, but he wasn't going to let class barriers stop him from pursuing a career in science. He worked for nights on end to bind his lecture notes into a book for his new hero. Lord, help me to think only of others, to be of use to mankind. Help me be part of the great circle that is your work and love. Lord, I am your servant. Well, this is excellent work, Faraday. So what is it you aim to do with your life? My desire, sir, is to escape from trade, which I find vicious and selfish, and to become a servant of science, which I imagine makes its pursuers amiable and liberal. <laughs> Really? Well, I shall leave it to the experience of a few years to set you right on that score. Look, I haven't anything at the moment. I'll send a note if anything comes up. Despite this humiliating setback, Faraday was determined to break free from his daily toil. His patience was rewarded.
You, ma'am? Meet Mr. Michael Faraday. He's going to be my helper while I recover. He assures me he is a Christian fellow. Perhaps with God and Faraday in charge of the chemicals, you and I will be safe in our place of work. Thank you, Professor Davy. Welcome, Faraday. Oh, no, thank you, and thank you, Sir Humphrey. Just stick to your job and do as you're told, and you'll be fine, Faraday. Faraday became the laboratory assistant, eagerly absorbing every scrap of knowledge that Davy deigned to impart. But in time, the pupil would surpass the master. The big excitement of the day was electricity. Another charge, Newman. The battery had just been invented, and all manner of experiments were being performed. But no one really understood what this strange force of electricity was. The academic establishment at the time thought that electricity was, you know, like a fluid flowing through a pipe, pushing its way along. But in 1821, a Danish researcher showed that when you pass an electrical current through a wire and place a compass near it, it deflected the needle at right angles. This was the first time researchers had seen electricity affect a magnet, the first glimpse of two forces which had previously been seen as entirely separate, now unified in some inexplicable way. Faraday, come look at this. Not a bright spark around here, but you can work it out. Ersted's reported an amazing finding. We're just replicating it here. Let's try the compass on the other side. Now, that is remarkable. But if the electrical force is flowing through the wire, why does the needle not move in the same direction, parallel to the wire? Quite. Let's try turning the whole apparatus round. Again, Newman. So, the electrical force goes this way, the compass points that way. How can one affect the other? Perhaps the electricity is throwing out some invisible force as it moves along. What? Perhaps some sort of electrical force is emanating outwards from the wire. Well, my dear boy, let me tell you that at the University of Cambridge, electricity flows through a wire, not sideways to it. Well, that may be what they teach at Cambridge, but it doesn't explain what's happening before our eyes. No, no, let's just get on. Let's swap the compass to below the wire. Why the compass was deflected at right angles, why the electricity was affecting the compass at all, dumbfounded Davy and many others. As we celebrate the marriage of Michael and Sarah. For Faraday, however, the problem became an obsession. It was a fascination inspired by his religion. For him, this was a way to understand God's hidden mysteries. Good deeds. Our love for our fellow man. There is a small, almost persecuted group in London called the Sandemanians. They were religious, not really a sect, they were just a small subset, sort of like Quakers. Faraday was a member of that group. It was a very gentle, decent group. They believed that underneath the whole surface of reality, everything was created by God in a unified way, that if you opened up one little part of it, you could see how everything was connected. 